Texas getting hit with another blast of winter weather right now. Leaving more than 3 million in the state without power. Trapped in their homes in freezing temperatures. No one knows when electricity will be restored. I want to talk about the winter storm where Greg Abbott allowed hundreds of people to die while allowing the largest windfall these gas companies have ever had. The winter storm in 2021, an entirely preventable humanitarian crisis that happened on his watch. Hundreds of Texans died, some in terrible conditions. Companies got very rich off the crisis and later rewarded him with big campaign donations. That's what defines Greg Abbott and how he governs Texas. Sure, the winter storm of 2021 was bad across the United States, but only Texas suffered the days-long blackouts, and only in Texas did hundreds die. And yes, the storm was a freak event, but hardly the first. Perhaps one of the coldest nights Houston has ever had. We may have more electricity rationing again tomorrow. The storm so big, it's difficult to grasp. Here's what 350 pages of detailed analysis and recommendations looks like. This was published after the last big storm and is full of concrete proposals on how to avoid yet another catastrophe, like forcing power companies to weatherproof their equipment and making sure they can generate extra electricity in extreme cold. Anyway, here's that report being thrown in the trash, which is pretty much what Texas politicians did with it. Neither Abbott nor his predecessor, Rick Perry, made those recommendations mandatory. And the private companies that power Texas were free to invest their profits however they chose. They completely ignored the changes that they knew needed to be made. And while the rest of the country was fine during that storm, Texas lost hundreds of people. And we went days and days and days without any power. The gas industry did do with their money over the years was donate $26 million to Greg Abbott's campaigns. Fortunately, Texas has two organizations whose job it is to oversee the power grid, and Governor Abbott appoints the leadership himself. ERCOT board members Mark Carpenter, Lori Kobos, and Deanne Walker all contributed to past Governor Abbott campaigns, pouring in a combined $18,670. So as temperatures began to plunge in February 2021, despite a 10-year heads up, Texas was more vulnerable than ever. Here's the deal. We do, as a state, have the ability to ensure that we do not run out of power. That didn't age well. On Sunday morning, temperatures fell to record-breaking lows. Winter storms in central Texas are only getting worse as the sun goes down. Those little heaters use a lot of juice. And as day turned to night, the Texas power grid was pushed to its limit. And that's exactly when those unregulated and unweatherproofed power stations froze up. One by one, they shut down, and the amount of electricity in the grid plummeted. Too many people need electricity right now, and there's nowhere near enough to go around. It's that simple. We do, as a state, have the ability to ensure we do not run out of power. He was wrong, and you paid the price. And then when the ele- While you were scrambling around with a flashlight, Abbott's regulators made one more costly decision. They raised wholesale electricity prices from an average of $25 a megawatt hour to $9,000. Yeah, 9,000 an hour. Making electricity expensive is meant to be a temporary measure to incentivize power stations to keep running. But Abbott's officials would keep this insane price up for almost five days. Abbott knew about it and didn't try to stop it. Meanwhile, Texas natural gas suppliers had a chance to profit from skyrocketing prices. And boy, they really cashed in. These companies made hundreds of millions of dollars in unexpected profits. And one company, Energy Transfer, well, let them tell you how much they made. In total, we now expect to realize approximately $2.4 billion from the storm. The blackouts continued through Tuesday. I started to panic because I knew it was, last night was cold, this is gonna be super cold. And into Wednesday. Four or five o'clock in the morning, I was going to drain the urine out of the bag. Her urine was bloody and it looked and it was like slush, like icy slush in the catheter tubing and bag. In the cold, it had frozen. So that when I tried to drain the bag, I couldn't drain the bag because the slush was so thick. The hospital was their last hope. 
So she left here and she went to the hospital. South Austin, they stopped them at South Austin, said no, she can't go there because the pipes broke. Remember, this isn't just a story about an entirely preventable humanitarian catastrophe. It's also a story about greed. So get this, at the exact same moment Connie Mae was heading to the hospital, Comstock Resources, a Texas natural gas company, was holding its quarterly earnings call. And um, but I think that's paid off pretty well in both January and February because prices have been moving up. And, and then obviously this week is like hitting the, you know, the, the jackpot, you know, is some of these incredible prices. Sean, this shows how the Green New Deal would be a deadly deal for the United States of America. Later that evening, Greg Abbott was on Fox News trying to score political points off the disaster. Uh, it just shows uh, that fossil fuel is necessary uh, for the state of Texas as well as... Of course, many Texans couldn't watch. They were on their third day with no power. The grid was finally restored to most homes on Friday morning. All told, four and a half million homes and businesses lost power. At least 240 Texans died, way more than any other state. Among them, Connie Mae. She died on Friday morning. You can see it on her death certificate. Eurosepsis complicated by a frozen urinary catheter. The natural gas companies? They made off with $11 billion in excess profits. There will be occasions where I'll be talking about like this and some other occasions when I'll be talking like this. Governor Abbott's first move after the storm passed, blame the grid operators. Reminder, his appointees oversee them. Before the storm hit, ERCOT repeatedly assured the state and the public that ERCOT was prepared. Those assurances turned out to be false. Greg Abbott, the piece of shit, has gotten millions and millions of dollars. 26, I believe it is, in donations from these people. Meanwhile, they made 11 billion. How anybody can vote for this piece of shit is beyond me. Facing mounting anger, the Texas legislature finally forced some private companies to winter-proof their infrastructure. Abbott was keen, he got credit for that. Power grid reform in Texas is now law. It seemed like changes were finally being made. One third of the board of ERCOT officially resigned today. But today, much of the grid infrastructure is still not protected from cold weather. And remember those $9,000 prices at the height of the storm? Well, the bill for that came due. And despite telling you this, it is outrageous for residents to be saddled with skyrocketing power bills. Your governor signed legislation securitizing billions in utility company debt. You'll be paying that money back in higher energy bills for a generation. In the weeks after he signed these bills, Abbott received $4.6 million in campaign donations from oil and gas interests. Among them, a $1 million donation from Kelsey Warren, CEO of Energy Transfer. Another oil tycoon, Paul Foster. He's now chairman of the board at ERCOT. Hi, I'm Todd Staples, treasurer of the Texas Oil and Gas Association Good Go. Oh, and look, key people in the oil and gas industry even appear in Abbott's campaign videos. Governor Greg, Greg Abbott, Abbott for re-election. You can see the pattern, right? Before, during, and after the crisis, Abbott and his cronies put big business before people, and he got his rewards. Despite all of this, Abbott looks set to win a third term. Texas needs to get out of the Abbott. This guy is a scum-sucking piece of shit, and he should wheel his ass back to whatever hole he came out of. I'm Zachariah, Lone Star Liberal. Y'all take it easy.